here. Two soil mixes. Hey everyone, welcome. Today we are going to talk about soil mixes. This is part three of our repotting series because there's a lot to cover. We're trying to condense this so it's not too crazy. And you don't get bored and just, yeah. Excellent. I mean, you may already be getting bored because these videos are long, but we have so much information we want to share and with you. we love you. talking about them. Yes, it's the best and we want you to be successful. So soil is super, super important. If you think about it, this is the environment that your plant is going to live for a long time. As we've already said in previous videos, you do not want to repot that often, you know, right? So a lot of our plants should be living in the same soil for years. And a lot of plants have been living in some of their own soil for years as well. So this is the foundation of your plant. If you don't have good soil, your plant is not going to be healthy. A lot of people think all soils are created equal and that's not the case. So we're gonna go through all the different things about soil that you need to know. For starters, you know, most soils are not good straight out of the bag, most. I mean, I would say organic mechanics, we like, because it's chunky, but most of them are not good. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, so you can't use the same soil for every single plant? No, people don't use the same sizes for us, so why do you think plants are the same? Yeah. Every plant has specific requirements and care requirements, so they want a soil to help them sustain that, especially in different climates. That's a big issue, especially here, where our plants are not absorbing as much water as somewhere like Florida, where it has so much sun year-round, unlike here where we barely get sun for half of the year. Yeah, and so being here in our cold dark houses, in our cold dark winter, they're not going to use as much water and so, and there's just completely different environments. So you just wanna just cater towards that. So we're gonna go through and talk about some things that are commonly found in your everyday potting soil. One of the main ingredients that you find in a lot of potting soils is peat moss. I am extremely anti-peat moss because Peat moss is, uh, comes from peat bogs, which are pristine environments. People come in and they scrape off the surface and they mine it in bricks and God knows what else. And you're just ruining everything. Like you're ruining the environment, all right? And it just makes me so sad. And also it's not a renewable resource. Peat moss grows one millimeter per year. So a one foot cubic thing of soil is like a thousand years. That's insane. In, no. in a bag and it's not gonna regenerate in a quick enough time for people to just keep on using in their potting soil. Yeah, it's so, not a sustainable source. No, in addition to being anti-peat moss, I am generally anti-perlite for the similar reasons in the sense that perlite is mined. It is volcanic stone glass. It's basically popped like popcorn. So we do have perlite in our potting station. I don't, I don't, I don't really like having it. We no. should have the we better should, alternatives. Yeah. We have alternatives, which we'll get to. Also perlite sucks. <laughs> All right. That's what it comes down to. If you, you know, if you put perlite mixed with your potting soil and you go and water it, perlite floats. So forget the perlite. I don't like it. Kind of just, you know, then slowly over time as you're watering, it yeah, then you're gonna get it compressed, to the and it's disgusting. And another thing that is commonly found in your standard potting soil is slow release fertilizer. Slow release fertilizer. A lot of people will post on a lot of groups and saying, "Oh my God, are these balls? What are these balls of my soil? Is it eggs?" No. Most of the time, it's slow release fertilizer. And this stuff is great. Like I really, really love slow release fertilizer and I do use it a lot in my soil mixes. And it helps you not to over fertilize. And we did do a video all about fertilizing your house plants and I'll link it above. And then another thing that is commonly listed in different kinds of soil is cocoa choir. And that is slowly starting to take the place of peat moss. And cocoa choir is a byproduct of the coconut industry. So people love coconut, live to eat coconut, they like to drink coconut. Like there's coconut everywhere nowadays. But then like, what do you do with those husks? Hmm, what do you do with those husks? Hmm. So they dry them out, they shred them up, and that is now in your soil. And that's becoming a really good peat moss alternative and, and it's awesome. So those are like, I would say the four main ingredients that yeah, you can find them. Definitely. And there are a bunch of other ones, yeah. like bark, which is good, especially for, you know, your aeroids and your, um, just to help with drainage as well. Um, but aeroids like it, especially. In Hoya. Yeah, in Hoya. And then also rice hulls, which we don't really have any oh. to show you, but they're a nice alternative. Super nice. To perlite. To perlite because it's, it's a product of the rice industry. Yeah, so we all like a rice and you know it's better to just throw it away for us gardeners to use it. 
And um, another um, really nice alternative is pumice, which we also don't have to show you, but it's another, it, it's very helpful with drainage. It's, um, what is pumice from? It's actually very similar to perlite. So um, where it's, it's like both volcanic rocks, so to speak. Yeah. And um, pumice is just like not puffed like perlite. Oh. And it, there's a less drastic mining process of it. And it so also is less likely to float. So if you still want something that's like perlite, you can use pumice instead. I, I would consider carrying it. Yeah, it's, and it's less yeah. detrimental to the environment. Totally. Like, and I almost forgot uh, worm castings, which is in a lot of soil and it's helpful because it's an organic fertilizer. It's literally worm poop. Precious, precious poop. Yes, we love poop. <laughs> Your plants love poop too. Yeah, and it's not gonna over fertilize because it's a natural fertilizer. So it slowly gets, yeah. yeah. But we love worm poop. Worm poop is the best. It was insect poop. We used to have insect poop. We still have insect poop. Ha! Ah, fast grass. Insect poop. So this is insect poop, and I do mix this stuff in my soil when I'm mixing up my potting mixes because it's it's good stuff. And then some other ingredients that I like to add to my soil that's not commonly added when you're making your custom soil mix. One is cocoa nut husks. So again, this is a byproduct of the coconut industry. So cocoa choir, we don't have any here right now, but it is in some of these soil. It's in, it definitely is an organic mechanic. Uh, it's just like really finely, finely shredded coconut bark. You usually or, get them in husk. condensed bricks. Yeah. And then this is more chunky and I love coconut husk for Hoya and Hoya love you for using coconut husks. Also, we only get the coconut husk. This is actually kind of important because there's horticultural coconut husk, horticultural coconut husk, and then there's um, like animal coconut husk and the agricultural coconut husk. <laughs> It's a tongue twister. <laughs> um, usually has a very high salt content because Ooh. they do not get rid of it. Yeah. And it's, you know, you're just, you use it for mulching and stuff like that as an alternative. And the nice thing about the animal one is they leach all that salt out of it. And so you're less likely to harm your plants. So that's why we also only carry the animal coconut husks. And all of these ingredients are in our handy dandy potting station, which you're more than welcome to come to use if you don't want to buy these products individually. That's exactly why it's here. And that's why it's here. And we can <laughs> help you. We can help you Anytime. pot off your plants. Make your own mixes. Speaking of things we got in our soil bar, we have also horticultural charcoal, and this is excellent for chucking up your soil. It also does not have a tendency to float, unlike perlite. <laughs> and I like it because I don't like looking at perlite. I hate seeing little white chunks in my soil. A lot of people even think perlite is just styrofoam and technically no, it's not. No. And but I mean, it's not at all. People have started using styrofoam yeah, so, as an alternative, which yeah. like cheap soils, like the Dollar Tree soil, they're putting <laughs> styrofoam on their soil. Like let's just do not that. go there. <laughs> and then we also have in our potting station, some lava rock. And this is like completely unprocessed. I like it because it blends in with your soil a lot more so you're not looking at ugly little pieces in there that's white and it comes in brown and it comes in gray. I use it all the time. Helps with drainage, aeration. Yeah. All that, good stuff. all that good stuff. And it doesn't float. And that's like the main thing like why we like these alternatives to perlite is because they don't float. So we um, decided to show you how great we enjoy organic mechanics. Great, great. Organic. I mean, I mean, just look how that's falling. Yeah, like falling. you can see some like, of like the. Husks. This is amazing, like delicious soil. Like, if I was a plant, I would want to live in this I soil. Would, me too. I just feel like I can't stop doing this. No, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> it feels really good. <laughs> All right, okay. So organic mechanics is awesome. And then we also decided, because we like you so much, to that we would you. swallow our pride and get some other popular soil mixes. All right. That we hate, that we do not like. So, brick. This is, yeah, no, this is ridiculous. Uh, so we haven't opened these yet. So let's start with organic potting mix from Ipsoma, which uh, a lot of people. I feel like a lot of people use like, them. Yeah, but I feel like, yeah. This is indoor plants. This is not good for indoor plants. Yeah, no, I would never use this in my like, soil or anything at all. Like, <laughs> look at that. It's a brick. It's Ladies and gentlemen, moved. oh my god! No, like can we even dump this out in here? Would it? It's gonna come out as like a, mainly yeah. a brick. Yeah. So you see yeah. that? That's not good. Uh, I know it has peat in it. I can I can see the peat, but it's uh, ingredients: thirty-five to forty-five percent sphagnum peat moss, 
Me. And then one or more of the following, doesn't tell you which ones are in here. Aged forest products, what is that? I think it's just floor. Like I don't know. Well, why are they taking floor garbage out? Yeah, of like that's what they need it. Need it. <laughs> Rude. Rude, rude to the forest. The trees need it. The forest yeah, needs it. Totally. Reforestation. Um, perlite, limestone. But yeah, don't use this stuff. How much work Crap. castings are in here? Like the, it's not even There's that nothing. moist. This is just like perlite, and it's so dry. I feel like you can make a fist. So this is always still something I like to do. And if it stays like a ball, it ain't good soil. All right, make a fist with that. Nope. It just falls apart. <laughs> Seconds later. Yeah. So that's yeah. you can't you can't do that. So no. Let's get this this one. Also, super dry. How is this moisture retention? I'm trying not to get it into our good soil. I know, we don't want really to do that. <laughs> it's super, super dry. And it's like, it's too fluffy. Like there's yeah. nothing stopping it from literally just completely condensing. Nothing. It's like a, it's like a snowball, but a dirt ball. Like this ball. one's like way worse. There's nothing in there. No. It's just peat. This is just literally straight peat. Never use this in my, it needs chunk. There's no chunk in here. There's no chunk. It's, it's, it's it would bark It would completely condense with one totally watering. Would. It would totally would. And, and you don't want that. Not to mention, I mean, how many of us have used miracle Grow and it just stays moist, like wet for forever. That's because it's peat moss. Guess where yeah. peat moss comes from? Peat bog. Guess what bogs are? Wet places. Why are wetlands. you putting that in your soil? It's actually Why are they able to take it from wetlands though? I thought wetlands were protected. Most but of them are. are. Yeah. But some of them aren't. That's sad. So, I mean, that, just look at the color difference between these, okay? Look at this. This is like black and rich and mm -hmm. delicious. This is like, this is dead. This is oil alive. I don't think this oil is and alive. And you want your soil to be alive. You want your soil to be like black and gorgeous like this soil. You mm -hmm. don't want it to be dry. So we choose organic mechanics over these guys. So with all of these soil mixes, you can switch up your watering schedule to fit the soil mix mm -hmm. and your plant. So that, you know, if it's more water retentive, like Miracle Grow, you want to water way less. So probably like every three to four weeks. While if you have a chunky mix, you're probably going to water every every week to every yeah. other week. That's going to be way more forgiving if you overwater. Yeah, because it'll dry out quicker because it's less moisture retentive. Um, a lot of people give big, back, big box stores a bad rep which I mean, we all get, but it's because, you know, if you water it inconsistently or too much, that's where it causes issues. That's where it causes the root rot and your plants just to, most of those plants at big box stores have lived in those pots in that soil for probably years. Yeah, especially those Hoyas, man. Hoyas don't grow that big overnight. Yeah, no. exactly. And you want to, it goes back to different climate. Those plants came from Florida which obviously use more water because they're in heat, they have sun year round, while once they come here, it's basically just a dungeon in the sky. There's no sun, there's no heat, we have no humidity. So if you're in overwater, you're gonna wanna add more chunk, more, you know, we don't like perlite, but more perlite, more pumice, more- um, Charcoal. Charcoal, or bark. more bark, exactly. More Anything. lava rock, any Speaking of those chunky, chunky things. And if you're in and if you're in underwater, add less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like for me, because I'm such a chronic underwater, I have honestly been using Organic Mechanics straight for a lot of my plants because Organic Mechanics does already have bark and all the other good stuff to chunk it up. I'm guilty because as soon as Organic Mechanics was introduced to me, that's all I use. Okay. And I, we are not going to go into different kinds of soil mixes with different kinds of plants because there's a lot of different kinds of plants out there, and this video is already really really long along with the series along with the series all about repotting so what we're going to do is when we we're gonna be doing some plant care videos so you can help you take care of your plants in our climate and our environment and in those videos we will talk about soil mixes specific to those plants so after this video next Friday is we're actually gonna <laughs> repot a plant so if you want to see those future videos um, that we will be doing then please subscribe if you haven't. Please give us a thumbs up if you like this video and this video series. Please share with your friends and anyone who always asks about repotting and how do you do this, how do you do that, just link them to our videos and then that way it should answer all their questions because we try to be as thorough as we can. Yes, and show all of your newbie friends too. All of your yeah. newbie plant friends because they, you know, they're anxious. They need your help totally. along with our <laughs> So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week. See ya. Bye. Don't repot yet. <laughs> yeah, don't repot.